All right, all right. All right, Alabama, wake up. We're back live with Real Talk with Herschel. 99.1 on your FM dial, WKCG. Now, before we get started, we're going to get these legalities out of the way. The views expressed today on the show are of me and my in-studio guests and do not necessarily reflect those of WKCG or TOPS. they true, but they may not agree with it. So now, you see live before you and you hear live before you, um, Reverend White uh, of My Sister's Keeper uh, of the Dothan Health Department. Uh, she's been a guest on here uh, once before. She finally told her people, so I know y'all out there listening to her and watching as well. Dr. White, welcome. Hello, how are you all today? We are great. We are great. Wonderful. Uh, Antoine, you walked in and uh, on one of our uh, tyrants yeah. with each other. One of his tyrants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and one of the subjects we were talking about was uh, this disgusting uh, abortion bill that was signed by Kay, Kay Ivey. Right. Uh, and uh, Antoine and I have been having it. Uh, and we thought it was improper to have this discussion without having women uh, lead this conversation. Uh, we went to Montgomery uh, week before last for the Women's March in Montgomery to cover it uh, and to give voice, you know, right. to to the uh, to the protests and to women. So uh, again, uh, welcome, and uh, we want to jump right in. What do you think about this this new bill that this new law that Miss Ivy signed? First of all, let me do my explainer. Mm -hmm. So everything that I'm getting ready to say, it does not represent my family, my husband, my ministry, nor the church that I, I attend or my workplace. These are my views and my views on. All right? Okay. Everybody thinks differently and they have their, their opinions and that's their opinion. One of the things that I do not like is some of the things that she stated in that bill. And if you don't mind, I would like to read it. Go ahead. Okay. This is the Alabama Human Life Protection Act, which was signed on May the 16th, 2019. And it states, this is what she stated. The legislators stand as a powerful testament to Alabamians' deeply held belief that every life is precious and that every life is a sacred gift from God. She went on to state and let us know that the Senate passed is 26 to 25 to 6. And then she put that with this bill, there's exception dealing with serious health risk to the mother and if the unborn child has a lethal anomaly. The Democrats tried to reintroduce an amendment to exempt for rape and incest, but the motion failed at 11 to 21 votes. She went on to say, you know, no matter one's personal view on abortion, we can all recognize that at least for this short term, the bill may be similarly be unenforceable. As a citizen of this great country, we must respect the authority of the U.S. Supreme Court even when we disagree with their decision. So my thing for her saying this, why would you sign that bill if you feel like we should go based on what the of the United States state. You're absolutely right. And as a female, I I go back to the um to what it states with um the Roe versus Wade. This lady was going up against the state of Texas yep. because she felt like her 14th Amendment was um unconstitutional because of the fact that she wanted to protect her right to voice her own opinion, her personal life as far as what she wanted to do. And I believe every woman should have that same protection, regardless of what other people think, what men think. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, as voters, we all vote people into where they're at, the House of Representatives, the Senate, okay? We are the ones that vote these people in. But my thing is, is if you're out there campaigning to get our votes, why can't you come back to us and ask us what we think as far as how you should vote? These men, majority of them was men, and then of course, you know, the latest signing took it into law. However, you didn't get the, the, the majority of the people of the state of Alabama choice. You got the Christian conservatives mm. who said, hey, this is what we want, but you ain't looking at Planned Parenthood. You ain't talking to the ones that's on the front line, that's talking to the women that doesn't want to carry these babies. 
it's their choice. It shouldn't be ours. You're right. I, I, we, we agree with that uh, wholeheartedly. Like you said, you know, I said the same thing as you. Uh, regardless of where you fall down on the issue, it's, it's, it's between a woman and her doctor or a woman and her guy. Because you have to reconcile that. That's, right. that's not my place. It's nobody that's not, place. That's not my place. Um, and it, it's, it's a bigger issue. Uh, I, be, I believe that it's a health care uh, healthcare thing. Um, women make choices just like anyone else based on where they are. Can I afford to keep this baby? Can I afford to feed this baby? Am I going to be able to pay health care? You work with the health department. You know how hard it is to find health care. Uh, a, a baby, uh, a child that's not potty trained costs you almost $300 a week for health care, for, for daycare. So you work at McDonald's, you don't even make $300 a week. How are you going to pay for health care? Uh, child care. Child care. So all of these things factor in, but they're, they're your choice. If, if our government is, is, is so concerned, like you said, with life, the day after she signed that bill, she signed the death warrant. Right. And then, if I may read. Knock yourself out. All right. The 14th Amendment, Section 1. It says, all persons born, born. The definition for born is what? Someone that's not born yet. Okay. So, therefore, it says, all persons born are naturalized in the United States are subject to the justification, um, jurisdiction, I'm sorry, I can't even read my own hand right now, <laughs> <laughs> no, of the United man. States, and of course, basically, it's just stating that you have to be born in order to receive the privileges and the exemptions of the law, okay? So therefore, an unborn fetus is not born, Right. so he or she, to me, does not have any rights. Okay. The mother has the right, right. She's based a, on the, the law of the land. Oh. And if you're going to go biblically, <laughs> the Bible in the book of Romans let us know that we are supposed to be governed to the government that we choose to put in authority. So if we're going to go based on what they're saying, then if the United States Supreme Court in 1972, I believe, or 74, whatever whichever one it was, if they went and ruled for this, then why are we going against it? Section 1. You said that's section, section 1? Section 1, Amendment 14. That's in our Constitution. Okay? The Constitution of the United States, that's what it says. All persons we'll, we'll, born. We'll, we'll put that up later on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. And this is what it says. All persons born are naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States. Okay? No state shall make or enforce any law we shall abridge the privilege or immunity of citizens of the United States. So therefore, we have to understand that you're putting what you feel is right upon the citizen. The citizen, which is and the mother. And we know that's why it's the mother. The mother's and the mother's the rights are protected under Amendment 14, Section 1. Yes, sir. You heard it here live. <laughs> Look it up. Everybody Look got to Google, Google that's it. That's right. Google it. That's what I just did. So, so, so again, you know, um, uh, Reverend White says something very important, just like just like I always say, you know, your personal your personal feelings or your your uh, moral convictions. This is not a moral law. It's not a moral argument. It's about healthcare. Right. It's about citizens' rights. Again, if we are truly citizens, we have the rights. But uh, as black folks, we know uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get into that another time. But you know, with this issue, staying with this abortion issue. You know, people, you have to stand up. This is not a moral law. It's not. Regardless of what you feel uh, morally, it's not based on morality. If you say all life is sacred, like she said, she signed a death warrant for a man the very next day. Uh -huh. And he's a citizen. Right. So you, so a citizen with rights, you'll put to death. An unborn child that hasn't even got here, you'll give him more rights. Than that person. Than the person. That's a the mother that's a citizen. Right. And, this, and, this is really backwards. And it is. And my thing is, I'm like this. Either you're going to go halfway or all the way. And I prefer going all the way. So don't go and say, okay, but we're going to put these two exceptions, okay? You cannot have an abortion except for these two reasons. If this is going to be the health of the mother, okay, because of whatever issues, or the child. But listen to this. 
Either way, if it does happen, if there's God forbid, if something happens to the mother and she has to abort, she still aborted a fetus. What's the difference between incest and rape? What's the difference? Your health versus you being having um, being raped by your father, mm. okay, brother, sister, cousin. These things do occur, and it occur daily, yeah. daily. So therefore, this girl, this person get pregnant, and you're telling her she cannot abort. It's her choice. But you saying this woman over here who's having complications, you can go ahead and abort that child. No, it's the exact same thing. You either gonna go all the way or no way at all. That's Come right. on now. That's if right. you're gonna, on, if you're gonna pass on, this right. bill, then it needs to be no one can have an abortion regardless. I don't care if you're about to die, guess what? You can abort that child. Come on with it. Come now I'm very with. passionate when it comes to that. <laughs> And yeah. like I said, these are my views and my views only. Don't come on, talk with. to my husband, don't talk to my pastor, don't go and talk to my family members. Because they can't talk about the steps of they can't they can't vouch for steps and themselves, but what's in my heart shall come out. Come on with it. Come on with it, Reverend Wayne. Come on with it. So I just wanna just let you all know that that we have to go based on the law. And if, if she wants to if she wants to pass, but she has passed, and now we know that we have a lot of people that expect to go against this. And that's fine. They have, that's their choice. They have that right. Um, but you also got to think about you're taking our rights away. The women's right to choose what is best for them. And uh, some, you know, uh, one thing you didn't mention about that bill that you signed. There's some horrible things in that bill. Uh, it gives rights to the uh, rapist. So if you're a rapist and you have that baby, you got to fight the rapist for custody of your own child. That's right. That is bananas. That that's in, we you talk about morale. Where is the morality in that? So you continuously are victimized by this idiot. So and you have to. Right. You gonna for, I'm gonna force you to have the baby. And then you're gonna have to fight for that same baby against the person that raped you. Right. And that, that's that's and, the same. And they go against everything that a lot of uh, organizations are out there for. You have women that are traumatized and traumatized for the rest of their life because of being abused. Right. Okay. And you we talked about rape. Okay. A person that has been raped, it would never leave them because that part of that person is on the inside of them, regardless, right. a child or not. You won't ever forget that. So that's trauma, and you carry the trauma over into every aspect of your relationships, your job, your children, how you write to certain things. It is there. And then, like you said, for you to go back over and have this, if you have a child and this child is birth, okay. My thing is, and I don't don't get me wrong, don't think. That I'm condoning it. Like I said, this is all my personal beliefs, okay? But I believe a woman should have the right to make that decision what is best for her. You can talk about a fetus, then, then examine what a fetus is, okay? And, and it let us know by the definition that it's unborn, okay? And then everything becomes to take place after eight weeks. One of the senators, which happened to be a man, once said that a woman knows that she's pregnant within seven to ten days. Well, has he ever been pregnant? <laughs> I didn't know that seven to ten days, and that was a quote. I, I wrote that down, and I was like, well, he's foolish, because I didn't know. And, oh, this was our Republican state senator, Clyde Chambly. Mm -hmm. He was the one that ushered this bill, right. okay? And so he was the one that said it, said it that a lady is for sure that she is pregnant between seven to 10 days. So now if you ladies out there that have had children and you knew you was pregnant between seven to 10 days, God bless you. God bless you. I, 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 I didn't know at that time. <laughs> wow. But yet and still, the definition um, for a fetus is an unborn, it's, it's unborn after eight weeks. So between seven to 10 days, the embryo, that is not born, that's not a citizen of the United States, get more rights than a person that's in jail for stuff that he or she probably didn't do right. because of a crooked system sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Brother Ward, I see you watching. You know, um, I, I'm so glad that you are passionate about uh, about your beliefs. Because, again, everybody has a right to their belief, like you said. Um, my thing is, what I do is between me and my God. You know, as long as I can reconcile, that's none of your business. And it's the same thing with uh, a woman that chooses to abort uh, a pregnancy or anything else, because I can't pass judgment. 
I, I, I can't pass judgment. It's none of my business. None of us can. Uh, so, so again, you know, uh, when you start talking about morality, and you know, it, it's amazing that they're concerned with the fee that's getting here, but they don't want to fund Medicaid. They won't fund health care for children, like the CHIP program. Planned they, Parenthood. Planned Parenthood, prenatal care. So I don't see them opening up anything for prenatal care so that you can have a healthy baby. I don't see that anywhere here. They took sex, sex education out of the schools. So again, how are, you, how are you going to properly bring a healthy child into the system? And then once the, once the child is here, shoot them in the streets, you miseducate them, you starve them out. So I guess black children are just for target practice. Uh, uh, and experiment on it. Yeah, yeah. You concerned when I'm getting here, then when you get here, you abuse. Well, my, my biggest thing, um, I truly believe that we, we're not talking to the people that's on the front line, okay? Talk with the people and ask, that's on the front line and ask, what is the problem? What's going on? How can we help, okay, versus you going and making decisions based on your own culture, your own community, okay? Your community is not the same as my community. I'm talking to my community and not letting you know exactly how it is. If I'm talking to a young lady and I can't get her to get on birth control because of whatever society has stated, because of what my mama has taught her to her about years ago, okay, it's a different time now. Um, they need to look at that. We have, uh, we can't, like you say, we can't go into the school system and talk about uh, contraceptives because they are about abstinence. Well, talk to me and I'll let you know, honey, there's there's very few people that abstain in, okay? Very few. 13, 14, 15 year olds, 15, 17, 18 year olds, abstinence. Okay, I could talk about abstinence, but yet and still, they are not studying anything I'm saying, and then they're coming in wanting pregnancy tests, okay? Wanting the ECP. All of these things that they are wanting because of the fact that we are not doing as the um, government, I shall say, is not doing is assisting the people who want to keep from this getting to the point. We shouldn't have to abort, okay, if we can make sure they get on some form of birth control. All right, make it accessible for them. Or we'll have proper and then education. Educate, ed education. I can educate, but if I if they're person leaving my office and go somewhere else and they're telling them the total opposite of what I'm saying, it's not helping. It's gonna take all of us, the community, to say, hey, yes. She's not better than you. She's just trying to educate you. She's trying to help you. I'm no better than you are. My choices are different because I don't want to have a baby when I don't have the father there with me. I don't want to have a baby and, and I'm not educated. I don't want to have a baby when I can't take care. I got to depend on the system to help me. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The system is there for a reason, but it's not for you to live off for, for the rest of your life. <laughs> Sound, does sound familiar, Antoine? I'm just over here in the corner. Yeah, okay. Yeah, over the corner. And I'm on the battlefield. I'm on the front. I'm one of the front line workers, and I try to let people know. You know, you come into my office, and you you on baby number five. Okay, you know what birth control is, birth control is all about. Some some women, I should say, get upset because they feel like it's my responsibility to take care of their child. Oh, it's not my responsibility to take care of your child. You want to lay down and enjoy yourself for two or three minutes, or however long it took. But my thing is, is that you need to think about those before you get to it. But that's the reason why I say come into our community. Come in our community and talk with them and find out. Someone has probably told them something, but if four or five people ain't saying the exact same thing, there's one saying that you going to have, the, the majority is going to dominate their, their thinking. You get right. what I'm saying? Yes. I can't go against Grandma and them. Right, that's right. Because you only got them for a couple well, of them told me I'm going to get big and fat or I'm going to wind up getting canceled. Well, you know you get canceled by eating the wrong food. Drinking them sodas? You can get canceled by taking some type of medication that probably ain't good for you, okay? You can get hit by a bus or a car, anything. But yet and still, grandma and them saying, no, grandma and them taking care of the babies and guess what they're doing? Go back to out there having Makes babies again. Right. Leave them babies where they belong. <laughs> then we won't have to worry about the abortion. That's the reason why birth control does work if they take them like they're supposed to be taken. But they don't want no one going into the schools talking about that. They want to preach abstinence. Yes, abstinence is. I tell people, first of all, we don't want you coming in here pregnant. We don't want you are not ready. We want to do everything we can to get you where your goals are, what you want out of life. So we ask them what they want out of life. They're not going to tell you, I want a baby at 15. 
I want to be around other people at my age. I want to be able to do things I want to do. I want to go to college. I want to have a career. I'm hearing that more now. I want to have a career. And I'm like, yay! You get what I'm saying? You want a career. All right, so if we're going to have a career, then these are the things that we need to do, to do on this path. Okay? These little boys are going to say all kinds of things in your ears. Yes, they are. They're going to smell good. They're going to tell you you look good. They're going to tell you they love you to get what they want from you. And then once they get what they want from you, they gone. Five, six months later, they gone. You tell them you're pregnant. They ain't mine. I got four girls. I know what you're talking about. I got four girls. I got four girls. Uh, I kind of want to go back to something you said earlier. Okay. Uh, uh, what can we do to help you? What can we do in the absence of a state mechanism that actually teaches sex education? What can we do to actually make sure that that's, that's at least getting spread in our communities? Encourage our legislators. The legislators uh, encourage our people that's out on the front line, these pastors, these, these preachers, these missionaries, evangelists. Encourage them to preach, not just abstinence, because they know their parishioners are coming in ba with babies in their churches, okay? Teach them birth control, okay? So those are the front lines I'm saying because, you know, a lot of people look up to pe uh, pastors, prophets, evangelists, so forth and so on. Then you have the leaders in the community, these leaders who own businesses, okay? These people, just like working at McDonald's, they own, whoever's the owner, they need to be encouraging their people. We don't want to talk about those things, but everyone should talk about it because if you can't come to work because your child is sick, that's going to be pro uh, production that's going to go like and at your job. Think about it. We're not bringing money in. We got to call somebody in because you can't work because something has happened to your child. All of these things, every leader that says they are leading in the community needs to do more. Okay. Every talk leader. With, talk with the people that works on the front line. How can I help you? Like you just said, it should be you. It should be the leaders because the, the people who are the leaders are the ones that gonna listen to. And then get the grandma with them. <laughs> they need. To, they need to start being educated. They need to be just like when my children was in school, if I didn't know anything that I could help my child, I went to the teacher say, now you teach me so I can teach my child. Right. So I feel like if you need to know something, don't be embarrassed because I didn't know. And I'm an educated woman. I went to college. I was a, all right, but in the hood. <laughs> but the biggest thing is we have to understand there's nothing wrong with asking for help. We don't know everything. I don't know everything. Trust me, there's a lot that I'm still learning from, and I like to be around people who are smarter than I am. Me too. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I like to glean from you. I'm like a sponge. I'm going to take it up, and then I'm going to use it because I want to know everything I can. Right. And so, therefore, we have so many people that is out there in the community, the ones that's in sorority fraternities, okay? You have whatever group you have. Do more educated, encouraging the people in the community. We want to give a handout, but not a hand up. Come on now, let's not just give a handout because that once a month or once a year handout is not going to help. This is an everyday need. Right, right. And yeah, but you know, it's a lot that we have to teach. Not just like you said, the Bible teaches on a lot of stuff. It's our role model. It's 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 a map for us to understand what we should be doing in every aspect of our life. Train up a child in the way that he should go. That means in everything, not just in church. Okay. Come on, come on, Reverend. That's right. They come didn't on, know about Reverend. Drugs, and they didn't know about alcohol. Come on, Reverend. They didn't know about rape, incest. They didn't know about their bodies. Come on. The, the names of their body parts, the correct names. Okay. Come on. The emotions of a female, the, the male. Whatever y'all had, y'all to sex You know, all of these things that you want to be lying to these little girls, telling them y'all know it. Y'all lie. What she looking at you for? What she looking at you for? Y'all know. Y'all want. Y'all want to get what you want to get, and y'all play on our emotion. But be honest, be true. But teach all of these things, every aspect that makes us whole. You're absolutely one right. One part of us doesn't make us whole. I got two arms. I don't have one arm. Praise God. I have two legs, not one. I have ten toes, praise God. So it takes all of them to work the right way. Think about it now. So therefore, it's going to take all of us. Yeah, I, I'm going to ask you a question. It's going to get you in a little bit of trouble, but okay. it's kind of based on what you said before. Okay. Um, why do you think uh, we don't get that message about sex education in our churches? Because of the fact that we are embarrassed about what we're liking in. And so therefore, we, we don't want to admit that I don't know something. We don't want to. We don't want to admit. Okay, if I say I'm sorry. I apologize for not getting this information. We want to learn everything else um, that people are society to say we need to learn about. Okay, we learn our ABCs, how to read. Okay, but what are we doing with that? 
it's the same thing. We're, we are not comfortable with our own body. We can't talk about our own, our own sexual orientation, our own desires. I will tell, I tell everyone, God made us sexual beings. Yes, so don't do. think sex ain't gonna be going on. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, Even right. if you don't commit it, you're thinking of it, okay? <laughs> it's there, it's gonna come. And um, you know, we have those tendencies. It's there, the desires. So therefore, I just think we need to be honest with ourselves and say, okay, what I'm liking it, I need to learn. I need to ask somebody. Um, it's the, it's, let me give an example as far as with me. I have been traumatized. I have been through certain things. Um, but I had to go and get help. And, and my thing is for years, it was shunned in, in, shunned in a church, okay? Everything's a sin. Everything is a sin. Oh, my God. Everything is a sin. My goodness. But God is about forgiveness. God is about love. And he wants us to be whole. And you can't be whole if you got people coming to tell him this is sin, 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 sin. Okay? But what can help me? You get what I'm saying? So a lot of times, I, you have to just turn away from the ones who just nagging and negative and go to someone that's going to lift you up. God is love. For God so love the world. And what does the world do? Mm. It mess up, tear up, mm. tear yes. down. Yes, Lord. Sometimes it builds you up, but we don't want to build each other up. You get what I'm saying? Because then when we start building people up, it's like, okay, I'm building you up, but where I'm at, I'm dying here. But you know what? When they, when you build somebody up, they should be able to look back and then pull you up. But we don't want to do that. The majority of the time, this black community, uh-uh, uh-uh. If I build you up, then you're going to be up there, but I'm left behind. But Jesus built everybody up. He was he was with the low of That's the right. low. Okay? Uh -huh. And he built up everybody. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Again, you're listening. To, you're listening to Real Talk with Herschel. Uh, in studio guest is none other than Reverend White of our sister's keeper. And today, I don't know what happened. She on fire today. Woo! She should have been here an hour ago. <laughs> but uh, again, like I always say, you know, she's always welcome here because uh, she is part of the solution, not part of the problem. And what I mean is this: if you are truly uh, trying to do work in our community. You are truly trying to help our youth, uh, help our elders to be re-educated in the proper way to do things. Like you said, we got to get the grandma in them because they've been miseducated yes. for so long. Uh, we have to reach back to, to our elders and help them understand that, that you're living now. Right. You're not living back in the day. Right. You know, uh, things are different. Uh, things are more accessible. And then stop using that. The Bible says God said be fruitful and multiply. I'm so tired of that line. The Bible say a lot of things. They say a lot of things about that. responsibility, too. Right, but they, they only take. That's what they, 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 they want to take. Uh-uh, let's just yeah. be a lot of things. educated. Yeah, yeah we, we, have to, uh, we have to continue to grow our community, uh, not tear it down. Uh, Doc, uh, Reverend White, um, I need you to give us your phone number again for those ladies out there in need, those young ladies. Grandma, get your pen out. Uh, granddaughter, get that number and give it to your grandma so she can call uh, Reverend White uh, and get some help um, at, uh, from our sister's keeper. Praise God for that. So my phone number is, of course, area code 334-796-7974. Again, 796-7974. And again, that's uh, our sister's keeper. Uh, one of uh, a few uh, women's uh, groups here in the Wiregrass. Uh, again, we will be putting this up on YouTube as well. Uh, you can see it in its entirety on Facebook. We're also going to make sure we get up uh, all of the groups that we uh, promote. We're going to put their phone numbers and their contact information up so that you can reach out. Uh, you may not need help. You may be a woman that uh, uh, can, help, can help and help some of these young girls because a lot of them don't know because nobody took the time to talk to them. Uh, Reverend White has uh, blessed us with her presence again. She came late. I ain't going to say that, but she came late. She was supposed to be here a little early because I don't like cutting her time short because she got so much to say. Today she's on fire. Uh, this is a discussion that has to continue. Uh, we have to continue to have these discussions with everyone involved. Uh, I've had high school students on. Um, oh, that's I'm, great. I'm going to get some of our elders from some of the groups that I belong to. Uh, some of the guys I, I do a Bible study with on, Sunday, on Saturday mornings. Uh, 
think the eldest is 85 and I'm the youngest. Oh, wow. So, you know, we have to have voices from everyone. Uh, so again, this is our show. This is our venue. Uh, as, as I said before, uh, you're welcome anytime you want to come on. All right? you just let me know you want to be on. Okay. Because uh, you waited this long, so I had to call you. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to say that on the air, but I had to call her with this going on and ask her to be on. Uh, and then she showed up late. Uh, then she showed up late. Okay. You, the, the, I, I got you, on camera. You will never say that we don't extend it and give a platform and voice to anyone in our community. It says my name, but this is ours. Anytime you have anything going on, it's positive and it's going to help our community. You want to help? You want to have a forum to help get out information to these young people and these old people. We, we, we're going to help and set that up. Anything you want to do, All right. you are at our disposal. I will. Now I ain't throwing you out, but they're going to throw us both out. All right, I'm, so, I'm, I'm so before you go, is there anything you have to say or would like to say to our audience? Just want to let everybody, everyone know that's listening that I do love you, and just remember that these are just my opinions. Nobody else's. No one has forced me to say what I, I said. And, and as always, uh, Reverend White is, is always extending herself uh, to help out. So never say that there's nobody out there to help you. She worked she work at the health department, so if you're in, in Dothan, go on down there. You see what she look like? See what she look like? Go on down there and harass her, tell her you need some help. You know, this, this is what we're here for. That's right. You know, That's right. you have not because you ask That's not. Right. There, are, there are people out here that want to help, and we're just trying to connect the two. Uh, and again, as always, uh, Reverend White is pleasure. And uh, I know you're going to blame it on your husband being late, but she was supposed to be here early. She can come here anytime she's ready. You know, and, and like I said, you, you have a platform uh, for Sisters Keep or anything else you need to do. I should have will. All right. Thank you all. Thank and you so much. You too. You look like my brother. That's why I keep looking at you.